everybody! Welcome back. We've got a, another integration by parts problem in the works. So, I'm really excited about it. I've left the formula up here from the last integration by parts problem. Uh, we have the integral of u dv um, equals uv minus the integral of v du, <laughs> um, which sounds crazy, but this part, this side of the equation is representing our original problem, and then this side is what we're going to plug um, these terms into later once we've solved for them. So, I'm actually going to need um, two other formulas for this problem, which may sound overwhelming, but it's, it's not. Um, the other two things that I'm going to use during this problem are the following. This is, um, this, is a, this is integration by parts, but it's also a trigonometric um, problem because we've got, uh, we've got sine and cosine involved. So the two formulas I'm going to use are um, the integral of sine of x equals negative cosine of x, which is a formula, and then also the integral of cosine of x equals sine of x. Okay, so those are the three formulas I'm going to use. They've taken up most of the board. <laughs> um, let's go ahead and get started. The problem that we're, that we're looking at is the integral of um, x sine of x dx. And the reason that this is an integration by parts problem is because we have two terms involved. We've got x <clears throat> and then we have sine of x. And we have two terms up here, u and dv. So what we need to do first is assign u and dv to these two parts of our formula, of our um, function. So um, the way I always um, advise people to assign u and dv, sometimes it's a guessing game, but what you're looking for is something, um, I always start with u, I'm looking for what I should assign u to. So when you assign u to something, you want um, the derivative of that thing to be simpler than what's in the function here. So, for example, I already know by looking at this that I'm going to assign u to x because when you take the derivative of x, you get 1, which is a lot simpler than x. Um, so, let's go ahead and assign u. Um, u is going to be x, and then we're going to write down here dv because u is x, automatically dv is the other thing, which is sine of x. So all you have to do is assign one of these, u or dv, and the other one is automatically whatever you didn't use. I like to start with u because um, it's, it's the easier one to identify. So this is, this is the way that I determined how to assign u. I have to find du and v. I assign u and dv. I'm going to take the, the, the derivative of u to get du, I'm going this way, and I'm going to take the antiderivative or the integral of dv to get v, going that way. So the derivative of u, or x here, is just 1. So this is a lot simpler than this, and you notice that I'm going to end up plugging these four terms back into this part of the uh, formula and we've got du over here inside the integral. And the whole point is to make this integral right here easier and simpler than this one over here, the one that we started with. So we want the, the integral that we end up with to be easier than x sine of x, which we don't know how to do without converting things. So um, we want du to be simple and we want v to be simple. du is the easier one to get. So. Um, so we've got one here that's going to go into this integral and hopefully make this simpler. So anyway, let's continue. Um, we have dv as sine of x. So we need to take the antiderivative or the integral of sine of x to get v. And I'm going to pull this straight from the formula because it's just something you have to memorize and I don't know any other way to do it. So this is the formula. When we take the integral or antiderivative of sine of x here, which is what we're doing, we need to take the antiderivative to get up to v, we get negative cosine of x. 
So there you go. V is negative cosine of x. Okay. So now we've got our four terms, and we want to take those and plug them back into this half over here of the formula. So let's go term by term here. The first thing we want to do is plug in u, and I will write parentheses around everything so it's really clear. Um, the first thing, u, which is x here. So x times v, which is negative cosine of x. Negative cosine of x. And then we have minus the integral, minus the integral of v, which we have here, um, negative cosine of x, and then du, which is 1. So we don't need to write that. I mean, it would be times 1, but that doesn't make any difference. It just leaves us again with negative cosine of x. So we can actually leave that out. And then, of course, we have to write dx because dx is just notation. Sometimes this confuses people. It's only notation. You practically don't even have to think about it. You don't even really have to write it if you don't want to. It's just it, dx accompanies this squiggly integral sign always. It's notation. All you care about is this. But I tack on the dx because that's technically correct. So um, now we've got everything written out here, and we want to go ahead and simplify this. So um, let's go ahead and erase this part so that we have some more room here. I don't want to get too low on the whiteboard. This term out in front here is um, we need to bring the, the negative sign out to the front. Um, you never want to have a negative sign in the middle of your of your term here. So this is going to simplify to negative, and then this x stays out in front. Negative x cosine of x. This term is now good to go. That's as simple as we're going to get. So then we have minus, and then um, the one thing we can actually do here before we um, before we come up here. Notice we've got a negative here on the cosine. Um, this is negative sign here actually represents negative 1, right? Um, and negative 1 is a constant. It's a coefficient on this cosine of x. It's a number, which means we can pull it out of the integral um, out in front here. So this is actually going to become, if we wrote a negative 1 out here, right? We have minus negative 1 and minus a negative number is just going to turn into a positive. So this is actually the same thing as plus the integral of cosine of x. So this can be a plus sign now, getting it from here. And we have the integral of cosine of x, which, remember I told you we would need this formula. Um, and this is just another formula to either plug into your calculator or put on your cheat sheet or memorize if you have to, if your professor makes you. But um, the integral of cosine of x is sine of x. So um, we can write sine of x. And then, of course, um, that's the whole integral. We always have to put plus c, um, because whenever we take an integral, we always have to account for a constant. And that's what the c is, is acting as a placeholder for. Um, and that's actually our final answer. Negative x cosine of x plus sine of x plus c. If you really wanted to, um, you could flip these two um, so that you don't have the negative out in front here, and you could do sine of x minus x times cosine of x plus c, which is a little bit cleaner because you start with a positive, but you don't have to. Either way is fine. So, there you have it.